kids, it's Captain Kate here. I hope you're having a great week. You know, I've been thinking. Over the last few years, we've taken some pretty wonderful adventures together. Do you remember when we got trapped on the desert island and we had to find someone to rescue us? We found the rescuer. And then last year, we went into outer space and had to save the galaxy. Wow, that one was epic. Well, I'm excited because right now we're about to embark on a new adventure together. Are you ready for it? Dun, dun, dun. Just kidding. It's not that kind of adventure, but it is going to be exciting. This is the first week that we are starting Kid Zone at Home. Every week, we're going to be sending out videos with worship music, Bible memory verses, and a story read from the Jesus Storybook Bible with your very own special Kid Zone friend. We know that you've missed coming and seeing your teachers, and your teachers miss you. So we thought we'll bring a little bit of Kid Zone to you. Just because we can't come back to Kid Zone yet doesn't mean we can't learn about Jesus together. And parents, don't forget to check the church website or your email inbox for kids' weekly resources that go along with the Kids at Home videos. Okay, let's get started with our first week of Kid Zone at Home with some music. This is a morning like no other. Okay, boys and girls, it's memory verse time. This week's memory verse is Psalm 16:8. Listen closely and pay attention to the bottom of your screen. The verse says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Hmm. I wonder what that means to be shaken. I guess when I'm afraid, like when we were in outer space or when something scary happens, I shake. Or when I'm nervous, I shake. So to be shaken means to be nervous or afraid or scared of something. Do you remember a time that you've been nervous or afraid or worried? Hmm. Did you remember then also that God is with you to keep your eyes on him because he's always there for you? This week, the story we're going to read has a few people that are nervous and worried. I want you to pay close attention and see what they do when they feel that way. And for our special guest this week, we want to say welcome to Miss Bobby. Hi 
guys, I'm really excited to read today's story from our uh, Jesus Storybook Bible. So if you have one, go ahead and open it up to page 214 to the story of a little girl and a poor frail lady. There was once a little girl who didn't get out of bed one morning, or the next, or the next. In fact, she didn't get out of bed for a whole month. She was very sick and no one knew how to make her better. Jairus was her daddy and he loved her. One day he was sitting by her bed, holding her hand, wishing there was something he could do. I know, he said. He jumped to his feet, put on his coat, kissed his daughter, ran down the steps, 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 past the servants, out of the house, through the gates, along the road, into the town, up the steps, 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 and into the temple. He fought his way through all the people until at last he found who he was looking for. Who do you think he was looking for? Did you say Jesus? Jesus, he said, falling at Jesus' feet. My daughter, he pleaded, please. But he didn't mean to beg because before he'd even finished speaking, Jesus reached out his hand and helped him up. I'll come at once, Jesus said. Jairus' eyes filled with tears. Jesus was coming. It would be all right. In those days, of course, they didn't have ambulances, so they had to go by foot. Jesus' helpers knew that he would heal the sick girl, but they must hurry. If Jesus didn't get there soon, it would be too late. But everyone was in the way, hustling and bustling, jostling and pressing, pushing and shoving, squishing and squashing. The disciples ran ahead, forcing back the crowd. Suddenly, Jesus stopped. His friends looked back. What was he doing? Who touched me, Jesus asked, because he felt power go out of him. Me, said a frail old lady, looking down at the ground because she was ashamed. The poor lady had been sick for 12 years and she had to get well. She knew if she only touched Jesus' coat, she would be healed. So she touched his coat, and instantly she was well. We don't have time, Jesus' friend said. But Jesus always had time. He reached out his hands and gently lifted her head. He looked into her eyes and smiled. You believed, he said, wiping a tear from her eye. And now you are well. Just then, Jairus' servant rushed up to Jairus. It's too late, he said breathlessly. Your daughter is dead. Jesus turned to Jairus. It's not too late, Jesus said. Trust me. At Jairus' house, everyone was crying, but Jesus said, I'm going to wake her up. Everyone laughed at him because they knew she was dead. Jesus walked into the little girl's bedroom. And there, lying in the corner, in the shadows, was the still little figure. Jesus sat on the bed and took her pale hand. Honey, he said, it's time to get up. And he reached down into death and gently brought the little girl back to life. The little girl woke up, rubbed her eyes as if she just had a good night's sleep, and leapt out of bed. Jesus threw open the shutters and sunlight flooded the dark room. Hungry? Jesus asked. She nodded. Jesus called to her family, bring this little girl some breakfast. Jesus helped and healed many people like this. He made blind people see. He made deaf people hear. He made lame people walk. Jesus was making the sad things come untrue. He was mending God's broken world. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope I see you guys next week. And um, I hope that you get a chance to talk all about this story together as a family when you're done. Bye, guys. Okay, boys and girls, it's memory verse time. Okay, boys and girls, do you remember our memory verse? Let's try it again. Psalm 16, 8. 
I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. So the next time you feel worried, nervous, or anxious, remember your God is always with you. And what's one way that we can keep our eyes always on him? Well, we can pray. That's one of the most amazing things about our God, is that he always listens when we talk to him because he loves us. So let's do that now. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, I thank you that you are strong and mighty and we can bring anything that, that scares us or makes us nervous or worried, we can bring that to you and keep our eyes focused on you. And you give us the confidence because you are so strong that we do not need to be afraid of anything. I pray that you would help us to learn what that means, to help us to trust that. And I ask that you would just use this um, time to bless our hearts and to make more of yourself in our lives. Help draw us to you and to keep our eyes on you always. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It was awesome getting to talk to you about Jesus today. I look forward to doing that again next week. Parents, don't forget, there is a kids resource link right below the Sunday morning live stream on our website. Have a wonderful week. From the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, nothing. From the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, nothing. From the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, nothing.
Seven. Seven. Seven.